Matt Spazer here. I visited Turnbull and Asser in New York to learn about shirt collars from bespoke associate Daniel Stroop. Here's what he taught me. So in terms of our classic tried and true collars, we have um, we have our you know sort of solid trifecta: the uh, Turnbull and Astor collar, the Prince of Wales collar, and the Regent collar. Most all of these are considered a semi-spread, um, with uh, varying degrees. So the the least spread would be the Turnbull and Astor collar, then uh, the Prince of Wales collar. And then the Regent collar here, having the most spread of the three. Another classic collar that is available is the number three collar. So um, it's a much more of a point collar that uh, is much more typical of classic menswear. Uh, these days, um, gentlemen are really gravitating to the Regent and the Prince of Wales collar. The proportions of these are really are really great. However, the classic Turmoil and Nasser collar over half of our orders are, are in the classic Turmoil and Aster collar. So it has a beautiful spread to it, wonderful height to it. The side curves to hug the clavicle to, to you know, just sit wonderfully on, on uh, you know, on the body, um, be it as, you know, an open collar or closed. And so um, after, um, after the Turmoil and Aster collar, the Prince of Wales and the Regent collar. So something to note that with Turmoil and Aster that these three collars are available in our Made to Measure program. Um, so uh, you can absolutely have you know, shirts in, you know, a, a collar that might suit you a little bit better. If you're a shorter gentleman, um, maybe the Regent might do you best. If you're, if you're a little larger, uh, maybe a little bit more stocky than the Prince of Wales or the classic Turnbull collar would do you good. Um, and bespoke, uh, uh, alone, the number three collar is available. Um, you know, uh, the point collar in London is actually kind of coming back, so we'll see if uh, that might be an addition to what we can offer in our made to measure, but currently as uh, only a bespoke pattern. So parlaying to that would be these two beautiful gentlemen from our uh, Legends collection. So we have the Dr. No, and the Casino Royale. Each feature a collar um, named for those particular films. So the Dr. No collar here is essentially the Regent collar, but it is larger. It's, a, it's an eighth of an inch larger all the way around. So uh, the collar itself, it is higher than most all the other ready to wear collars. So higher than the Thermal and Asser collar, and especially more uh, than the Regent collar. The um, more pointed uh, Casino Royale collar here. So this was made specifically for Mr. Craig, and uh, it and it is a variation on the number three that has more of a spread. So basically, it has a larger spread to go underneath uh, his suiting jacket. Because typically, when you wear a point collar, you can still see the points. Um, uh, with most suiting, especially a single breasted. Um, piece of tailoring, be it a, a suit or a uh, dinner jacket or a tuxedo. So uh, the points were made more spread and longer so that they would be covered. So in terms of why these particular collars were chosen, uh, we do, um, once again, uh, with the Casino Royale, it, you know, this particular shape was chosen so that it would be uh, long enough and have a wonderful spread to fit underneath the lapels of the dinner jacket that Mr. Craig was wearing. Um, and then, you know, in terms of the other specifics of the shirt, it does have a double cuff with a miter on the, on the corner of it, and then a uh, fly front or covered front there, so you, so you don't have to use any studs. It's a much more modern selection, and um, it's a very, you know, just kind of simple, sleek way. Um, it was, he was dressed only in a, a set of uh, Albert Thurston uh, white silk um, 
uh, braces. So uh, a cummerbund would, is not needed for, uh, for a shirt like this, as you wouldn't have the exposed buttonhole for, uh, for the need of a cummerbund. So to get a little bit more, you know, classic bond here, we have the Dr. No shirt available in white and blue. Um, it features the cocktail cuff. Now, uh, I do always note that um, in the ready-to-wear version and in Made to Measure, the cocktail cuff is actually modeled more after what Roger Moore wore. It's a, it's a bit flatter here. Uh, Connery's uh, version ha was was a little bit more rounded, and so we can we can do that kind of accommodation in our bespoke you know program, but uh, we cannot uh, we don't do that there in Made to Measure. However, the collar is um, consistent with what um, Mr. Connery wore. Again, it's our Regent collar, nice and spread there with um, an extra eighth of an inch all the way around in in the depth and the points, and so. Um, you know, Mr. Connery is a very big man. He, he, you know, he was a bodybuilder, of course, as we all know. So, um, so we needed a collar to accommodate that kind of proportion for him. So, um, so this kind of spread collar it emphasized, you know, his, you know, his, you know, brawn, uh, you know, his broad rather shoulders and yeah, sure, I guess maybe his brawniness as well. And, um, and it's a very, you know, powerful kind of masculine collar. So, um, so definitely appropriate for the character of James Bond, as well as you know the physicality of the actor that played him. These two collars are they only available ready to wear and bespoke, or can you get these in made to measure? So you can get um, you can only get these in uh, bespoke in their ready to wear um, you know forms. Uh, you, however, most people do, um, and they are satisfied with a Regent collar, uh, regular Regent collar for um, their Doctor No. However, um, you know reproduction. However, you know to, to get a true replica of a Connery shirt, you have to go into bespoke with us. Um, the uh, the Casino Royale. This particular collar is only available in bespoke. So, um, as well as the mitered cuff. Uh, only a squared cuff is available in the made to measure program. That said, we can of course do the covered fly. So we can make a version of this for you that is, that is uh, perfectly acceptable. Especially in terms of um, the collars made for Mr. Brosnan and, and his uh, films. So um, from what we can tell, it looks more like a Prince of Wales or a Regent collar. However, given the height of his collars, I would go more toward, uh, lean more towards a Prince of Wales, or it could be the Regent plus an eighth, the Doctor No. But I think in terms of the spread, it looks like the uh, Prince of Wales here. Also though, um, so the Terminal and Aster collar, uh, it did go through an evolution in the, mid to late 90s, so in uh, 1998, was when we introduced the curve to the collar. Again, you know, something that you can see much better with the, the collar flat. So before, the collar was far more straight. And so when, so with that, it did sit a little differently because it, you know, because that's just how something would sit on um, a, a, a straight, um, line would just sit um, a little, one could say, I don't want to say less elegantly, but um, a little, just a little bit harsher on, on, on the body. So, um, so my hypothesis is that it's a person that, um, that he used either a combination of these three or uh, possibly the straight or older collar TNA. In Tomorrow Never Dies. In Tomorrow Never Dies, that's right. And then, um, or the Prince of Wales. As his collars do have a wonderful height to them, um, and so I'm not confident that a regular Regent collar would be what he would have done. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, just looking at photos and that sort of thing. So um, these here are just example of like bespoke, you know, um, collars from our archives. Some of them we actually do still use for some gentlemen, like um, like these little tiny short points have been used for a few of our uh, more sport collars. 
Some uh, for a tab collar, some people prefer the larger, longer collar to accommodate larger ties, which is so. So this is the number three tab, which we uh, use in lieu of just the regular tab collar. Other selections that people use, of course, you have the wing collar for white tie formal wear. Um, you ha also have the St. James collar here. Again, I usually use that, you know, in lieu of like a club collar or something more for sport. Um, but every once in a while, you can find some uh, some more interesting uses for these uh, more vintage and archival selections. A lot of these do feature a much more classic point collar shape that is, um, you know, very straight, very rigid. But you know, there are some lovely details like how this one curves out a little bit more, you know, creating a, a really kind of wonderful classic spread that you don't really see in collars anymore. In terms of uh, collar construction, we have lots of options here at Terminal Nasser. So first of all, it's a 12 point uh, uh, construction with us here. We have the collar band and the top collar. So this here is an example of the Terminal Nasser collar, the classic. So you can really see how it has that, that particular curve. So we have multiple lining options for you to start from regular linings, medium linings, soft linings, no linings, cuff linings. Um, if you are looking for a very, very stiff collar, uh, there, um, you know, we can do something that's called Stay Flex. We, uh, we offer fusing only in our bespoke options. So, um, so that would be what's called a mellow sand top fuse. So typically when you feel the terminal and Nasser collar, you can move the fabric. With the top fuse, it, it, it's, uh, you know, you can't move the top layer. The, 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 the inside layer is still, um, is still a floating collar. So that's what that's called. This is a, it's a floating collar. So um, what are the benefits of what? So, um, so first of all, a floating collar, it's just a hallmark of a handmade garment for one. Um, uh, one of the largest benefits is that, um, is that the collar re remains, or rather it keeps the integrity of the shape and, um, and it actually, you know, when it shrinks, it all shrinks at the same time, it all shrinks together, and you don't have many of the issues. In terms of care, though, a lot of people, um, we have to just sort of give them a quick tutorial that when you iron, you just have to iron this way, to iron towards the center, because um, if you iron like that, then you could get a little wrinkle like that. So, however, if ironing isn't really your thing, then what we can do is we can do a top fuse, as mentioned before. So that is probably the biggest, um, you know, advantage for for top fusing your collars. I will have to say, fusing can break down over time. It doesn't matter how well it's made, who made it, etc. It's the nature of 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 the the, the actual product, you know. You know, it's a, it's an adhesive, and especially when you run adhesive through water multiple, multiple times, it's going to eventually break down. So what kind of linings are you know, used the most? Generally, it's just a regular lining. We put little stay flakes here in the, in the, in the ends, uh, not only at the button so that the color, the color band stays up, but also at the end of the, um, of the collar itself. So what is the stay flex? So what that does is it keeps it nice and, and high. So, uh, and, and, and stiff. So essentially, if you hold it up against the light, which is going to be very difficult to do, it is this patch right here. So that would be, so there's your collar stay, which are removable here at Turnbull. And then, but we have this patch right here that of uh, what's called stay flex. And, and it keeps the collar nice and high and straight. So, um, in bespoke, you have options. I personally don't have a stay flex in, in my particular collar. So I've done a collar that has that is very malleable. It's a medium lining, no stay flex, because I always use a collar pin. So um, so when you do that, it just helps it just helps the collar, you know, create a nice better it just it's just a better, cleaner shape. So so you know, so keeping those 
uh, keeping those options available, you know, that's something that we definitely think about here in Bespoke, about, you know, what it is that the collar does for the gentleman and what the gentleman's particular needs are. Um, the other options that would be your uh, popular would be a medium lining. So if you're doing a sport shirt, such as a beautiful cashmere blend uh, with maybe a, a button down collar, then you would at least want it to be a medium lining. And then generally if, if a collar is a button down collar, it would also be top fused. So how does the medium compare to the regular? So basically, um, if I just sort of try to bend the collar like this, you see the resistance. So this one here has much more of a resistance than wanting to, to kind of collapse upon itself. Well, this one here, you can easily move. And then the, the soft collar, you can just sort of almost bend it up and it was like that. So um, again, you know, with, in terms of purposes, it depends on the kind of shirt that you're, that you're wanting to do. So say it's like a sport shirt, a medium collar would be appropriate. A regular day shirt or dress shirt, you would probably at least want a regular lining. And then a soft lining would be, you know, if you did some, like a camp collar shirt, something that's, you know, very casual, that's usually, you know, worn open and flat, you know, think the kind of uh, beautiful kind of gingham camp shirts that uh, Mr. Connery wore in, in a lot of the more classic films. So um, something like this would be used in that sort of a collar. And how does the cuff lining compare to the collar lining? Typically, uh, typically you would kind of match. So if you have Stay Flex as an example in your collar, you would also have it in the cuff. Um, if your collars are fused, your cuffs are generally fused. That doesn't have to be the case. Some people, you know, they use like a regular lining in their cuffs, but they want a very, very stiff collar, so they use, you know, a Stay Flex or something like that. Now the Stay Flex here, you know, it's, it's very difficult to, 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 to move it for it to be malleable. So it's a, it's a very stiff collar. Meanwhile, if you did the same thing on a soft collar, you can easily, you know, you can easily um, crush it like that. So, you know, if someone is um, like a traveler or something like that, they travel quite a bit, um, you know, doing you know, top fusing or, or uh, you know, a little bit more of a stiffer collar might, might serve them better. But, um, you know, if, it, if it's their holiday shirts, a nice soft collar might do best. So it, it just depends on the client and the, sh and the shirt uh, itself. Mm -hmm.